because you're flying just left to right. Okay. Adam, Dorm. you've been doing a ton of flying of your quadcopter lately. I have. The Inspire drone arrived a few weeks ago and I've been taking it out probably two or three times a week since it arrived and really practicing with it. Practicing both flying it, the parameters under which it can be flown safely, how close I can get to obstacles and stuff, and then really mainly how to operate it as a camera. Right. We talked a bunch about this on the podcast, um, about your learning of it and your operating procedures, but yeah. we wanted to show people exactly how you go about it. You don't just take the quadcopter, put it in your car, and, and take it out. No. There's a whole package. There's a whole package, and there's a lot of people setting up their quadcopters on their knees on the ground. And the first thing that I did was I made a table. Ah. Now, what I did was... There, so I have a stand for it. <laughs> yep. Instead of setting up the stand here, I'll just pop it on the pool table. The table I made is out of plywood. I actually utilized a cheap table from one of those office big mm -hmm. box stores, and I just grabbed the steel parts and the rack off of it. It was like right. 25 bucks. And then I put them on the underside of a plywood platform, and this side is covered with green pool table felt. Yep. By the way, I buy old pool table felt from pool table repair people. It's quite inexpensive and it's great for lining things. Lining tabletops, boxes, yeah. and then I painted. put a target here. <laughs> now, at first it was just the dot and that, and that is the logo of a big retailer. Yeah. So I decided to add the third ring. Um, and the primary thing you want to know when you set up your copter is which direction do the propellers lock. So I put those logos there. Now, functional. Functional. The other problem I had, and people noted this on the video, was glare on the uh, iPad screen. Mm -hmm. So I made these oh, styrene wow. uh, iPad covers. Uh, it's got a slot for the charging cable. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows the clamp to work on the iPad itself. The problem with these, these are black styrene. I made these in about 30 minutes, and we can post. I have a picture. And they're lined. Yeah, I lined them in, in black felt, which is like you can buy black yeah. self-stick felt at the hardware store. I have a picture I took of all the separate pieces, so we can post that, but they don't fold. Right. So this is, these don't work for me. So let's start to pull out, and it, basically, whenever I get a new thing, uh, a tool or uh, anything, I, I want to improve it. You make I want it yours. To, I want to make it mine, but I also want to improve my use of it. So I, as I use it, I take notes about the flow and what I want out of the flow. So I noted very quickly that I didn't just want a table for the Inspire. I needed a table that had a separate place to put all the delicate stuff, like the ND filter and uh, the, the SD cards and all of that stuff. So I found, first of all, a cover. These are all, there's a million different kinds of these, but this is a Velcro-based cloth cover that uh, clamps on and operates very nicely. And someone makes this and sells it. Someone makes this and sells it, it's about 15 bucks. Okay. Um, I have a couple of others coming because I like to find out who makes the one that I really like. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple of problems with this, but you know, for the most part, that's terrific. That's like exactly the kind of thing. And folding flat is excellent. So you pull out the Inspire there. And I've, it's wide enough so that the Inspire can't fall off the table. So satisfying. But you can put it out and take it out of travel mode very quickly. I, I, I must say, I do have a problem with this camera box that the gimbal right. comes in. It's a, it's a lovely little package, but it's got, this is what we call a living hinge. That's going to break off. This is not a five-year solution. No. This is a one-year solution. And this is, a, this, is a, this is absolutely a five-plus year device. Mm -hmm. um, so I may remake this in aluminum. Mm. I've been toying around with that idea. Um, I have also been, I've been using my field notes as a flight log. So every time I take a flight, I take a note of uh, the date, the time, the duration of the flight, how many batteries I used, what frequencies I chose, what the weather conditions and wind speeds were, the people in attendance, and then general notes on how the flying went, on the things that I learned, the things that I tried. Um, I and this is not required by law. But this is not required. You're but doing the diligence. I figured, like we said on the podcast, that you know, at a certain point, licensure is will require a certain amount of hours mm -hmm. of flying, and I'd like to log them all. I also, in the back of this note, here's the I, flow, the kind of things that I like to do, mm -hmm. uh, checklist. Ah, okay. Here's the other thing that I made. <laughs> I made a checklist. Now. There's a lot of moving parts to this, no pun intended. Uh, and there's a lot of things you need to do to do it right. So 
checklist or something that drone enthusiasts are trading back and forth online all the time. All the forums have discussions about them. I included, I thought, what I thought were the most salient ones here. Uh, transmitter firmware up to date, inspect device for obvious defects, batteries charged, propellers tightened and locked, ND filter, SD card, antenna up, then warn bystanders of imminent takeoff. I made a few of these. And you are you actually going through each and every single one yeah. before your flight. Absolutely, absolutely. It really makes sense if you want to do this safely to take, because I've had, before I printed this up, I was like, oh, I almost forgot the frequency. And I'm about to, mm -hmm. I was about to fly on a super uh, 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 crowded frequent part of the frequency spectrum where all sorts of other crap was going on. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's not awesome. Uh, and then in the end, turning it off and putting it, putting it away. Um, I actually made a few of these, Ooh. and I thought that we could, well, here's one for you. Awesome. Um, I thought that we could uh, give a couple away untested. Yeah, absolutely. Um, these are not the, these, also, we should, we'll put up the files. Yes. <laughs> It'll be easy for you to download, print them out yourself, yeah. but we have a few extra. Put a comment below, and we'll pick a random winner. Okay, let's see. What else? There are lots of, this I haven't even shown you yet because I wanted your reaction okay. on the camera. There are a lot of little parts. There are extra bumpers for the uh, camera mount. There are now propeller locks, which DJI has shipped to make sure your propellers don't spin themselves off. And there's an ND filter. And it's like those little parts and bits, the, the, the case for the Inspire is good for the large parts, but little parts and bits can get lost. So I have five batteries, but I have six battery compartments. So I started by making an extra non-battery compartment uh, that but fit in it looks the battery like a battery yes now this was prototype number one <laughs> I, I, I let's show actually, people a battery this morning i got a little more advanced oh. with some vacuum form and this one actually opens wow. up sd extra sd cards in the side there then uh nd filter is still something i have to figure out mm -hmm. how to hold that know. safely and then bumpers i actually put behind a sliding plastic door i did this this morning uh, and here's the propeller locks. Okay, so let's show people a battery. And, yeah. And because you don't need the full this hood of the battery. No, you don't. But that's but that's a pretty good one to one approximation. Oh yeah, and right it slips. There. Here, listen, it's so slips right in to the battery compartment, that's and gives great. me all that extra room for small stuff. I think I'm just saying, DJI, if you're listening, <laughs> maybe you guys want to make one of these. Oh, you need to mark which sides. Yes, the you lid. need to say open this side. Open that right. side. Because, you know, you do want to be able to store the tiny stuff. Yes. Um, all right. So there's those. There's uh, there's the chargers. I have two chargers because of all the batteries. I need to be, I want to be able to charge them up quickly. And, and to be clear, the, uh, the the case you're taking out of is the case that it comes in. Yes. Which is a pretty great travel case. I think this case is fantastic. It, it's, um, it's like Iron Man's briefcase. You just like set it down, put it in your car, and then deploy. And there's all and the pops. propellers. The thing about this case that I love, that it, so this, like you said, this is the case you get when you buy the Inspire. Um, it is as small as it could be. Mm -hmm. And it's soft and fits nicely in your car without scraping stuff up. Um, but I would not check this on a plane. Yeah. I, uh, I just don't see this holding up to the p a potential abuse it could get on a plane. But Jamie and I were contacted by GPC who oh. gave us each one of their beautiful uh, Inspire Pelican cases. Uh, let's see here. Wow. There we go. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That is heavy duty. It is really, really, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I've got a couple of extra doodads in here. Um, this thing is really, really wonderful. Um, it holds everything. I just, I love watching this thing go down into it. Foink. Now, you have the target here, but you're yeah. never going to land it on this. I tried. I saw you. Try. Yeah, you saw me. I got above it. <laughs> no, it wasn't going to no, happen. No, not gonna happen. I think if I wanted to land this on this, what I'd do is I'd put neodymium magnets on the feet of the Inspire. Uh. <gasps> oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everything slots really, really nicely into this case. Um, there's uh, that. And... Ah, I can't forget that, this. And, right? This one goes here. Bam. Ta-da. The camera case, this is a little bit of a, yeah, that goes there. This comes in here. It's got a slot for an extra transmitter. It actually has room for all of these propellers, which I love. 
Um, and uh, extra cables and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the ND filter, which is totally critical yes. in, in bright, in bright daylight. daylight. You really, really need it. Um, is the one problematic thing. I actually, they, they, they send it in a little padded like mm -hmm. envelope, which uh, blew away on me. Oh. <laughs> So that that can happen, uh, and I I found DJI's uh, uh, harness just a little overly complex. So I bought this one on eBay for like five or six bucks. It's, RC flyers have known you yeah. attach a transmitter to that, so you're not wearing on your arms. Yeah, and it, it it's not even just wearing on your arms. Actually, when you when you're on the this and you've got that, you can actually free up finger mm -hmm. strength for actually manipulating. Because I mean, you're or trying if to... you fly using the both the, the, the pinch yeah. method as opposed to just the thumb method, right? So you're toggling between follow and free, mm -hmm. and you're 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 tilting the camera up and down at the same point as you're moving. It's yes. very compli complicated. So these are actually fantastic, and I think I think that is it. Yeah, yeah. this hood also folds down. This, now this again. So I've just written to the guys that make this case, and I said, you need to make me an extra slot. Uh. So I can keep a hood in there because it just has to sit there, unfortunately. Right. Um, and you know, this is brand new. Like yeah. this product has only been selling for a month now, so they're they're still working these things out. I'm really pleased with this. I have to say, I've taken this out to the field most of the times that I've been doing it, and it's a fantastic base of operations for for keeping everything clean. Lawn chair next. Yes. A yeah. Wait, camping chair. I camping keep forgetting chair. my camping chair. <laughs> well, we'll be going on more flights with you, hopefully. I think people enjoyed it last time. Yes. Um, and talking about as you learn and as you gain experience with this and other quadcopters, you'll get to see some, how the footage improves and, and, and best practices. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. One more thing. Wow, at least one more at thing. At least. <laughs> uh, it's been like a week and a half since About we a last week and a half. I'm... shot what you just saw. Yeah. And you've already done more. I've been flying a lot, and so I, I, as I fly, I monitor my flow, and I kind of get to know how things are working. Um, and so, oh, so the first thing I did was, I made myself a field notes ah. type flight log in which I have both a pre-flight, post-flight, and flight checklist um, and pages for logging every flight, duration, time, weather, conditions, who was there, what I did, how many batteries I used. This is just like, for me, I gave you guys each yeah. one, but like, really, I, what I want to do is reach out to the Field Notes guys. Get them actually produced. Yeah, because it's like a prototype. Completely borrowed after Field yeah. Notes. So that was one thing. Fits in your back pocket. Now, then, uh, post the issue of the Inspire 1, DJI released uh, prop locks for making sure mm -hmm. the propellers don't spin off. And they're black, and that kind of bothered me because I'd put them on, and then I'd do some other stuff, and they're like, did I put the prop locks on? It's a small thing, but I like quick visual clarity that things are as they should be. So I painted my prop locks bright yellow so that you can clearly see that they're on. It's a little industrial power loader. Exactly, yes, yeah. I've actually debated whether to do bright orange or green, and yellow is really the only, especially this thing has a such of industrial feel. Um, but that's... That's not the biggest thing I did this week. Um, I have purchased several batteries for yep. this so that I can fly a lot. And when I come home, charging them is 85 minutes a piece. And it's one of these sort of like, go in, cook dinner, come back out, plug in another battery. So I invested, I bought some extra battery chargers and I made, ta-da, a gang charger for my Inspire batteries. Now it holds the, it holds my the transmitter. transmitter and can charge the transmitter and also charge a second transmitter when I get one. Okay. Um, it And will charge up to three batteries. So you have three power supplies in there. I have all three power supplies. I'm not overloading any single power supply. Oh, and okay, so th this is how, yeah, I see. Yes, I see. so that's the little plug that plugs yes. into the battery. I've yes. mounted it and epoxied it inside. Uh, this is effectively a UHMW chopping block. I bought surplus at Tap Plastics. Mm. And it's all screwed and uh, uh, tapped together. Uh, I've included vent holes here. Just in case it gets hot. Now, are you concerned that you might need active cooling for this? I might. And if I do, I can certainly add in a couple of small whisper fans right here. That's a fairly trivial modification to make. Uh, and I've managed to keep it all open. Like, no, no, none of the four sides of the battery are actually closed. 
They're all open to make airflow be able to move through. So I'm hoping that's enough. But uh, you know, if it's not, I can add active cooling like we said. And just one plug. One plug, three batteries, 85 minutes, you're out and ready to go flying again. So uh, clearly I'm gonna need a separate case. Yeah. So that will be a project. Maybe we'll do a one day build because I'll build my secondary Inspire case. But that's not even the biggest thing that I've been working <laughs> on this week. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, Duncan Clark, my second camera, he flies using these, uh, these high end video goggles. Mm -hmm. And I tried them on and video goggles for those of us with glasses is just a special kind of nightmare. Yes. Um, they get all sweaty and the diopters don't quite need... work and I've got bifocals so it's like it's awful. Not only that, having started flying this with real line of sight, I appreciate the line of sight. It makes a big difference to be able to look at the controller and the device and sort of split my focus between those. And it's going to be, that's the only legal way to fly these right. commercially in the exactly. future. exactly. So then I started thinking, how, but I can't quite see perfectly the shot in daylight, even with my nice styrene covers over the iPad, and they make some special high brightness monitors, but I'm it not sure. It sounds like a standard camera problem. Well, that's the thing is I was thinking what I really need is a camera IP. Wait a minute, I have a standard camera eyepiece. So for my uh, Sony FS700 and for my, uh, 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 my Mark III, I have a Zacuto eyepiece that is a high res, high brightness, beautiful diopter. What they call it, EVF. Yes, okay. So here's what I came up with. Now this is prototype number one. This took me about an hour to set up and I've flown with it a couple of times already and I kind of like it. It might need some more modifications. There we go. Okay. So let me get this straight. You're flying by sight. You have the transmitter. Your so view's not the, obstructed. Yeah. You still can have a tablet, you know, your iPad yep. mini tablet to here, view covered in everything. everything. But when you want to get a shot. when it's Because I'm operating this thing solely as a camera platform. I'm not that interested in drones in and of themselves. But as a camera platform, it's an amazing thing. So for me, knowing that that shot is precise is the most important thing. So what I can do is fly it, fly it, fly it into position. Now it's time to get the shot. Ooh, and I can watch it and get that shot. I can even open this eye if I'm getting too close to something, but I can really, really frame. And that's what a cameraman needs to be able to do. Wow. So I'm hoping that this, I found a thing called the Pirate Eye Viewer from 2010. A guy tried it out, it was a pair of sunglasses with a little thing here. My problem with all those little viewers is that virtual screen size, it's all bullshit, yeah. it doesn't work. I need something like this, something with a real viewfinder that really shows me what my frame is and allows me to sort of glory in it and understand it because that's how we're gonna get footage that we can use. That's amazing. Awesome, that's a work in progress. This is a work in progress. We're still working on improving that battery charger, the battery gang charger. charger. And there'll be a, a, a case for the extra materials for my Inspire, but um, I'm I, continuing to fly and continuing to flow. I think it's safe to say you're obsessed. I am a little obsessed. And that's a great thing. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for this a little bit of addition, yep. and we'll probably check in in a few months, see how it's going. Maybe even a couple of weeks, who knows? We'll see you next time.